Hey, folks, welcome to the uh, Spectrum <laughs> Podcast. Oh, I was going to do it. Thought you were, what the fuck? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Off without a hitch. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know what? We're rolling. <laughs> we'll do it live. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Do our intro, Benji. No, no, no. Be my guest. Go ahead. No, no. You be my guest, bro. Go ahead. No, no. You know what? I, I haven't been here in a minute. I'll, I'll, I'll let you take over. Welcome to the Smack Raw Podcast, Welcome folks. to the Smack Raw Podcast. <laughs> this is Calavera Comedy. We got the Kai Tais. Okay, go ahead, man. Go ahead. It's not that hard. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, you would mess with me on your return show. <laughs> hey, man. We're your one-stop shop for all your WWE, AEW, uh, Recaps, reviews, pay-per-view predictions, man. Super happy to be welcoming back Benji. What a blast he is on the show, Burr. right, folks? <laughs> Joining us today, we, of course, have the AJ Style podcast and Sebastian and newcomer, Mr. Kevin Crazy. What's going on, Kevin? <laughs> Chilling, man. This is the most... You know. I was like, hey, man, I told Kevin before this show, like, oh, man, now that Rob's gone, wait till you hear the level of professionalism we carry when Benji's on the show. <laughs> Just... This is journalism at its finest, man. It's out the window. Oh, my God. Good to have you back, man. No, all joking aside, Benji, great to have you back on the show. Yes, sir. We were yes, sir. worried about you, heard you were up to no good, but glad to have you out of uh, Twitter jail. Apparently, that's all it was. <laughs> Anyways, folks, if you're listening to the Staying podcast, in a car crash. yeah, were you in a car crash? Yeah, you know, it's not one for me to put my personal business out here on the on the <laughs> podcast, but sure, yeah, I was I was involved in a motor vehicle incident, but you know, it's all good. I'm here, I'm still kicking. So, how much were you drinking? <laughs> a little bit of the bubbly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, man! Hey, listen, folks. If you're listening us to on, if you're listening to us on the audio realm, thank you so much. You can find us on Podbean, Stitcher, uh, Spotify, iTunes. We're on Stitcher now. We are on Stitcher, man. Oh shit! Uh, that was uh, you can uh, chalk that up to Sebastian. He was the one who suggested us to look them up. So. What up? What up? What up? Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. I think I said iTunes right. and Google Play Music. Of course, we're on YouTube. Every time, you know, we're trying to get you over to YouTube. Like and subscribe. Been talking to Vince. Um, I've been talking to you a little bit, Benji, um, and Sarah. I think you three, uh, you might be our YouTube division here soon. Sorry to just YouTube break YouTube division. Yeah, oh, sorry shit. to break this to you out of nowhere, but yeah, you wow. guys might be the YouTube division. Um, we'll get more into it off the air, but guys, we are working on YouTube. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe. Help us get to 100 subscribers. We are honestly grateful, man, because we do this for fun. And uh, we definitely do it for you guys. I don't know why else we would show up God knows how many days a week now and record these podcasts. Um, lastly, we like to talk wrestling with each other, but of course we would like to talk it with you so you can find us on Twitter, um, at SmackDrawPod, which right now, uh, Sebastian, you've been kind of leading our uh, social media stuff, He's man. The social media division? I'm telling you, yeah, he's the spot. I'm, I'm the Twitter division. The Twitter division. the Twitter division. Oh, my gosh. Myself at the Kai Tai Show, and then I'll let Sebastian. Does that make you the Fuhrer? No, dude, don't even. Stop. Just stop, dude. Kyle's uh, the production division. This is, this is just such a wreck. I can't. I feel like I'm on episode one all over again. Oh, my God. Um, but let, let let the people, let the Third Reich know where they can find you at. Fuck you, dude. I swear to God. <laughs> Benji and, and Kevin, either of you, feel free to let them know where you're on Twitter, man. Jesus Christ. Go ahead, Kevin. Be my guest. Well, well I'm not affiliated with the Third Reich or anything like that. But... <laughs> uh... <laughs> Such a terrible return. <laughs> uh, you can find me at uh, Kevin Crazy or Kevin underscore Crazy three sixteen. Uh, Kevin or uh, excuse me, Crazy with a K. <laughs> and you could find me at Calavera Comedy Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff. You don't know what it is. Oh my gosh, Jesus Christ! So, folks, we're here to talk two hundred five live in NXT. <laughs> Just, <laughs> dude, I. I don't know if you've li made me legitimately blush on air. This is, this is just, oh my god! You know, it would not be the first time. 
<laughs> but let's get into 205 Live. <laughs> Thanks the for hottest that. hour of action. Oh, uh, you go ahead. Um, Benji, you're the returning. You're the returning host, man. You go ahead. Take it from here, man. So we kick off this 205 Live with Drake Maverick dressed like a used car salesman. I mean, this guy <laughs> looked like Danny DeVito and Matilda. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it's talking to Lindsay Dorado and Humberto Carrillo talking about how if Lindsay wins his match against Humberto Carrillo later on in the show he'll become he'll be involved in the it'll become a triple threat match for the title now this sparks a intrigue with Carrillo he's still being the humble you know up and comer but at this point, we've, we've seen a more gritty, more determined Lince Dorado than we've ever seen before. So that's how we start. We set off the show. Then we get a match between... So that's the, we'll cut right into a match between Tony Nice and Mike Canellis. Now, interesting note about Tony Nice. He's coming out here with some new gear. It's a new black and white gear, which is very symbolic of his position. You know, he's starting to fall down in the card, starting to fall down almost near rock bottom. So we see him wear this black gear with white wings, you know, kind of symbolizing his fall, his descent into the darkness. Meanwhile, maintaining some of his light, a la something like a symbiote Spider-Man or some shit, you know? Damn, Little details. So I don't know if anyone paid attention to that. It's <laughs> so good. <laughs> How did then we we'll get cut- by without you, Benji? <laughs> so this match was, was hard hitting, man. Nice was hitting combos left and right, but every time he tried to fly, the thorn without his rose, Mike Canellis, was just grind, grinding him down. Single. Um, we had DDTs into the aprons. Just every single time, Nice was trying to do his his normal premier athlete stuff, his athleticism, his speed, his power. Canellis was always one step ahead of him. Just grinded him down and and he could not succumb to this Mike Canellis craftiness. And I have to say I'm if anyone follows Mike Canellis on Twitter or anything, you know, this guy, humble dude, hard working dude, been at two oh five life for a minute now, not getting many opportunities, you know. You could have your opinions on this thing with um Maria and, and the whole pregnancy thing and him being demasculated or whatever. But after this this hard grueling battle, um, Canellis actually picks up this win, and you could just feel the elation in his eyes. You could see it was just palpable the the just the the relief that he's finally getting a push. He's finally moving upwards. He's needed and a at big the same win. time. Yeah, and so yeah. we have this dichotomy of Mike Canellis rising and. Oh, Tony Nice's and descent, Tony Nice's descent. Into, into despair. You know, just falling. Further, further into the so-called rock bottom. Beautiful stuff. Any thoughts man. on that? <laughs> How could we? <laughs> How could we have any thoughts, man? What a beautiful narrative. Um, no, man. It's uh, after seeing like in, you know. So before before you took your little sabbatical from the show, my constant dialogue with you was like, "What the hell are they doing with?" Canellis getting emasculated week in and week out and now he finally gets his big victory over a former champion Mm -hmm. in Tony Nese man and um I'm hoping man I'm hoping it I hope it kicks off um now granted you know these guys need their identities but like I'm hoping Mike Canellis can be like another Buddy Murphy man just be like a really good kept secret and then have that breakthrough match that gets everyone behind him and can kind of get the whole emasculation angle uh, in the rear view mirror and that's that's kind of my take on it what do you guys think it's a good match uh, I really enjoyed and I, I really think they need to do this on the main roster more it would like, just throw out two guys there that struggle, you know, and make the story about that because they went to it multiple times on commentary. Both of these guys need a win. It was hard to tell who needed a win more, you know, and it kind of made the match, even though it probably didn't, it made it sound like it had some stakes to it. So it added that extra element. Uh, Tony Nese had that 450. And he sold that near fall to perfect, perfection. The crowd was in it. It was really good. I really enjoyed it. Hell yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I would agree. I thought the storytelling in the match was, uh, you know, really, really good. Uh, you know, really good back and forth. Um, obviously, huge win for Mike Kanellis. Um, excited to see what they're going to do with him from here. Hell yeah. And Maria had a big smile on her face as well. <laughs> they went to Maria and she seemed happy. So, we might be getting kind of past this embarrassing Mike. Oh my Maria. god, I know. It it spilled over to Raw. I was... I, Honestly, now I'm grateful for Maria getting that 24-7 championship because it kind of ended, like, the the peak of that just, like, clipping the dude's balls week in and week out. He was getting his balls clipped twice a week. He'd get it clipped on Raw and then get it clipped back on 205 Live, man. Like, God dang, man. It's rough. Uh, also, before they cut to Drake and Lindsay and Carrillo in the back, it showed the fallout of Roman and Daniel. Uh, yes. Helping. I thought that was yeah. kind of cool. Uh, I've never seen them drag the, you know, post SmackDown into it like that. So I thought that made the Rowan thing feel like a bigger. Deal. Yeah, man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I thought that w- I didn't even know that was part of the show. I kind of skipped past that. I didn't know that they had played that from SmackDown into the Two Hundred Five Live. Yeah, it was yeah, part they of bled this. it right in, man. Yeah. That's pretty cool, man. Like the the con- continuity is not a lot, not a thing they do a lot in this company. But um, I'm glad they're finally warming up to it, and that's exactly how we had Lindsay Dorado in this backstage segment warming up, getting ready for his match, and then out of nowhere, the God hashtag Davari De Niro comes out, looking <laughs> fly as hell. He looks like but, a million bucks, man. Oh my God, dude, dude, he looks fresh to death, but. He was a little bit of a gin today. He had a little bit of a little bit of a you know devil's advocate here, whispering sweet nothing to, to Lindsay Dorado's ear, you know, just planting those seeds of dissension with him and the Lucha it's House like, Party. If it wasn't for me, I'd be Metalik. I'd be Kalisto. You technically you're here because of me, you know. Yeah. And Dorado's starting to feel like, man, like I've I've got my own achievement. Achievements. Yeah, they're my boys, you know, but I've, I've kind of, I have, I can do it on my own type thing, but I'm not Aiden, I don't know, but he's starting to pick up on what Davari is kind of throwing his way, you know? So it was kind of a little bit of a, I guess you could say foreshadowing, so to speak. So I think it is, uh, we got a tease of if Lynn State does win the triple for if he was to win later, that, uh, we would get the biggest Lucha House party ever on 205. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. And, yeah. And, so there's, there's that every time they tease something like this, it usually fucking happens. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Yeah, there's definitely some stuff, some foreboding stuff, very ominous going on. You know, you don't know where it's going to happen. Then we um, got... I think after this, we get a little promo by the Sing Bros. Your favorite Bollywood boys. Bale, bale, bale. Yo, Samir <laughs> Singh was looking like Soraya and Singh, man. This dude was looking like they were fresh. You know, they got the Bollywood stuff going. They cut it. And they're really leading into this Bollywood thespian thing. And, and that's how they kind of put their promo in, you know. Um, very smooth. I'm very high on these guys, dude. I, I don't know about y'all, but I, I see a lot of potential with these guys. You want to know how high I am on them? How? How high you uh, I skipped it as soon as I came on my screen. <laughs> oh my God. Damn. Wow. Damn. That's Damn. so cold. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I just, I don't like them. You know, I've you know, come around to some them. Pe- some people just can't stand the spice, you know? Hey, no. <laughs> Do you think- I don't know if it's where they don't have a tad division on there and they just don't really say that, that important the, that, does, that does hurt a little bit um, <laughs> I just you do have a lot of tag teams at 205 Live but you do. pretty much not fighting for a lot of things um, yeah. yeah yeah do you think that um, the two, two part question A do the Singh brothers make it into 2K20 and then B do does their Bollywood award become a prop in the game too like a weapon you can get under the <laughs> ring you know, uh, back back in the day, in the older games, you would have that. That would happen, that. right? Yeah, I don't think they have that in these new games. Oh, if man. they're in the game, yeah, I think I think uh, Hillbilly Jam would use more than them. them. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, my God, man. Wow. 
So um, on that note, <laughs> we'll cut to the to the next match. <laughs> we, Zawa and Kendrick versus Brandon Scott and Tyler Hastings. Tyler Hastings, I believe, was the same guy that Braun Strowman threw around like a rag doll. Yeah. Same guy. Brandon Scott's not. Um, although Br- Brandon Scott, this, the chubby dude, was looking like your favorite stepdad, and yet Tyler Hastings over here looking like Aaron Taylor Johnson from Kick Ass. Nice. Um, <laughs> God damn, man. Benji with the freaking. But yeah, they do like they did their thing, whatever. But um, this is pretty much you know just set up for Kendrick and Tazawa to call out Gallagher. Told him, hey, find a partner. Let's do this thing. And that's that's just a pretty standard, just you know, squash match. <laughs> Nothing. Really. It was also to yeah. prove that squash matches happen on every brand. Two oh five. Yeah. Yep. It's the I squash treatment. <laughs> Got the dang uh, roundhouse kick to flatliner combo though. That's pretty nasty. Um. Yeah, again, we have the, 205 ha- Live has solid tag teams with a lot of stories built in within the within the teams, but there's nothing really to fight for other than feuds, you know. Yeah, I I do like the Tazawa Kendrick dichotomy that they had. That you, you I remember you're the one who educated me on it because I had forgot. But Kendrick said, you know, he was the one who essentially was Tozawa's tutor, you know, and taught him the ropes. Then they had their feud. And then, you know, like, they go on their separate ways after their feud and come back full circle, and now they're a team. And that that's cool, like, to me to think of, like, guys that had big feuds and come back and then are teammates. Like, it's interesting. I, I, I know it's probably been done to death, but off the top of my head, I, I can't personally think of one. And I'm sure it would be super easy to disprove me. Um, of course. And yeah, but... I, I guess I'll say this. I, I, I hate to say how I did that because the Bollywood boys are attacking me. The, the difference slander. here is Kendrick and Zawa, if they split up, everyone could be seen as guys. They both had the belt. But you know, you know, in their case, they're not going to be seen as guys. <laughs> what, are, what are you trying to say? What are you trying to say about the Bollywood boys? <laughs> the Singh brothers? Uh-oh. They're not no championship level? Nope. Yeah, no single not titles single No single. That's why so, they have their Bollywood award. Yeah. But you know, they're, they've they always been the tag team. They're tag team guys, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I understand. I just wish they had a little more or something. To, you know, like I said, Tazawa or Kendrick, if they break off, then, you know, they can enter the title scene as far as... So, there's a reason to still be invested. But... I just know the Bollywood boys probably ain't going to go. You know, 1.58 billion people would like to disagree with you. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, they also like Jinder Mahal, too. Oh, my what? God. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's wrong with Jinder Mahal? What? Whoa. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> what? Oh, man. I mean, he had, like, the worst strain of recent memory, to say the least. Oh, None of it would just as... Paul, you know, this dude, man, I, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I dude, mean, that was so AJ good. AJ struggled to have a good match with him. So. Oh, Jesus. That was so good. <laughs> kind of killed Nakamura. Uh, oh, yeah, we Yeah, okay. <laughs> Lindsay Dorado versus Humberto Carrillo was up next. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, we had we had a bat stage play before this. Oh uh, yeah, totally sorry man, I'm more. just getting hasty. <laughs> oh yes, yes, the best part the of trash the show, goblin. the highlight. <laughs> Tony knees coming over here beating this necro goblin, and just whooped Oni Lurkin's ass. He put him in a blender. He said, "You don't know me. You don't speak for me. You know, just threw him left and right." And I replayed this about three different I was like a pig in mud man I was just enjoying myself <laughs> I was watching this and I was like I bet Benji is loving it I was loving it man. What, this... what happened between you and Orny bro like what happened between you guys it's a tumultuous thing all I said was it'd be cool if you tap out to Gulak cause he's better or whatever and he said I'm gonna bite your head off <laughs> That's fucking rules. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> Sir. 
I, I came at it at a peaceful way. This guy is threatening to chop my Benji, limbs off. Benji know? has a shoot rivalry with this Oni Lorcan dude. Oh like, for gosh. real. <laughs> Needless to say, it was a treat. It was a pleasure. It was Christmas in July watching this dude get his due desserts, you know? Oh my gosh. Man. Again, this was further um, accentuating the fact that Nice is just, he's spiraling at this point. He's just descending into that, to that dark point that everybody gets once they hit rock bottom, you know, and that's pretty much where Nice is. He's pretty much in the back of the line right now. Just the pain of obscurity, man. It, he's the strongest man, man. So with the Nobody wants to be in obscurity, so we have Lince Dorado and Humberto Carrillo pretty much at the top of the pack right now, being as relevant as they've ever been, try, as far away from that obscure Tony Nese nice at this point. Coming into this match, um, you could say both of them really need this win. It would be good for Carrillo to have a one-on-one -on -one match with Gulak. At the same time, this is Dorado's Pretty much his first shot at a at a title match, you know. So it, even of, being mentioned in a title, not mm -hmm. even like first yes, shot at one, but even being in the picture. Yes, sir. So there's a lot on the line here, man. And I have to say, man, this match. I don't know if there was it was those nerves or whatever. At the beginning, it was a little bit of miscommunication, a little bit of you know losing of of your footing and or whatever. But as they picked up and you know they started you know getting into it, man, these guys were just on point. Just everyone, they were. It was just counter after counter, doing their moves left and right. Um, Carrillo's very, very crisp with his offense, as you guys have seen. You know, he he hits these arm drags from different angles, bouncing off the ropes. Um, Lince Dorado, a, a guy that has a lot of had a lot of opportunity to shine and anything on his own. He really started to showcase what he was doing. This guy was limber. He was quick on his feet. He was a cat, you know. And I don't know, man. What do you guys? What did you guys think about this match? Uh, like you said, at first there was some, you know, miscues. They even had a miscue later on in the match where uh, Lindsay went for an uh, inverted rana off the ropes. And, so uh, we have we had <laughs> to describe it. Lindsay jumps face forward onto the second rope, but pushes him backward, like in a seated position, onto um, Carrillo's shoulders and flips into a reverse Rana. And man, like he he did, I don't know if he could didn't get enough like rotation on his flip, but he pretty much landed on his own neck oh, at the God. same time as he flipped yeah. Carrillo. Like it, 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 I'm sure it was a move they worked out and it worked perfectly but in the here i don't know if it was just because it was so late in the match that they were trying this they were a little bit winded um it didn't come out smoothly but if it would have man this would have been a highlight oh absolutely and it, and it unfortunately wouldn't. and i'm just glad it wasn't worse than what it was because like right. you said he landed right on his neck uh earlier in the match though it was a suicide dive once they turned it right into a tornado ddt i thought that was pretty neat. um you know it's just a lot of it highlights uh yeah let's say you know in the air just flawless he hit a perfect chart shooting star press in the match yeah uh yeah and like, like the match earlier this one had states and that's uh, what 205 lately has been able to do they like to push like a just high action match like them and nxt both like you know your main event they're coming to deliver like, if there's one thing you can rely on is that main event now of 205 Live and NXT, they are coming to deliver, and you better pay attention, you know? And it, it was very on-brand for 205 Live. Like, the crowd was cool. It was all right in the beginning, but by this match, man, they oh, were on their it. feet. They were, they were as loud as they were on SmackDown, man. And most of the people mm -hmm. stayed, honestly. Like, if you watched 205 Live when they first started out, people were dipping, they weren't leaving, you know? But more and more and more, people are actually staying. Yep. They're actually into the match because they know they're going to get to see some action, some stuff that they've never seen before, man. What did you think of the match, Ken? 
Well, I mean, I feel like uh, Humberto Carrillo is one of the you know young uh, up and comers on any brand in WWE. Honestly, uh, I love watching him week in and week out. And of course, Lince Dorado, like you guys all said, I mean, he's he's just so perfect in the air. Um, you know, and with uh, Carrillo's athleticism, that's a really you know I, th- I thought they had some pretty good chemistry. But you know, some some uh, some things like you you guys said, like the um, inverted. Hurricane Rana off the top rope. That was <laughs> that was sketchy as hell. But <laughs> I mean, you know, um, other than those kinds of things, it was. I mean, I was screaming when I was watching it in my living room. You know, oh yeah, man. <laughs> now, so, uh, Kev, how long have you been ahead. watching Two Hundred Five Four, man? Probably about three months or so. Nice, so, good three mm-hmm. months, I bet. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You didn't have to go through. Fucking Enzo. Don't give me any stories on that. Oh my god. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was for context. That was a dark time in 205 Live history when you, Vince McMahon was still running it, and um, he really watered the, the matches you see now. You were not getting then. You you, yeah, you were getting pretty much, close. pretty much pretty uh, much the watered down versions of wrestling that you would get on a Raw or SmackDown. And it wasn't connecting, man. Like it was, it was bad. The storylines were pretty much the same as they were running there. It just, yeah. it was a far cry away from what they did with the Cruiserweight Classic. That's what people thought they were gonna get. And then yeah. we had, you know, Enzo, and then you know Neville, and all this, all this drama, and it just, it just wasn't working. And I think it was not long after that. Um, pretty much the after that, uh, they had uh, Triple H take over, and that's when I think you started watching. And in the last three months, as you've seen, it's it's a very different product. Hell yeah! Right on. Yeah, because I was gonna say since I started watching it, I've been uh, actually really impressed mm-hmm. with it. You know, mm-hmm. honestly, like it's I almost like it better than the main roster. You and know, you know like, what? <laughs> Shout out to you, man, that you gave it a chance. A lot of people were soured about how and uh, two of our live used to be that they don't they didn't even give. At a chance anymore, but you you took a shot with it, man. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, thanks, man. <laughs> Glad I did. <laughs> so, what'd y'all think of the finish? You know, I'm I'm a very I'm lucha. You know, I'm lucha house party all the way. I'm, I support all those. Old, and I don't know why you said of course, but I'm gonna. Pass <laughs> like, you know what? Like for him to to get that win over Carrillo, it doesn't hurt him at all. A lot of Hell people no. think that a loss means you're buried. You know what? Not man. This didn't hurt him at all. It's a triple threat. Gulak has been a force of nature, you know. And um, so this this really this is gonna be a really good match. And I'm hoping it's not a pre-show match. I'm hoping they make the card. How yeah. long have we been saying that though for Benji? They've been give. Man. To be fair, to be fair, they have been putting them on. They took them off these last few times only because of Shane McMahon. Yeah, but like, I don't know. Have they ever made it to the main show? Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, there was a there was a minute where they were on the main show for a bit, but as soon as you know they they had leaned heavy on the Shane McMahon stuff, that that's what they pushed to the side, basically. I mean, okay, so I what. Dabari pay- and Tony Nese. Yeah, and wasn't um, uh, Gulak and uh, oh Christ, who was it that he wrestled? Stream Rose, I think. I think he was on the main card. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right about that. Damn, I just can't recall. I've got I've got a shit memory, so I mean I believe you guys. I I absolutely believe you. I just got a shit memory. I just uh, always thought like lurking. Was, yeah, was yeah. That who he- <laughs> Which I wish he would have made him tap, but it's cool. He put him in the blender too. <laughs> in the world. So as as I said, Gulak, you know, being that force of nature, he came to say a little hello to Lince Dorado and Carrillo. So as Lince Dorado is walking back off the ramp, feeling good off this win, you know, like hell yeah, I'm gonna triple threat him on my first title match. Gulak said, "Uh uh-uh. uh," Molly whopped him, and then. You know, Carrillo's like, wait, what's going on? You know, like, like, chill out, man. And then out of nowhere, the black bat from hell, Tony Nese, just <laughs> smacks the shit out of Carrillo, man. And what's this? A team up? Gulak and Nice? What's going on? And we leave on that cliffhanger. Of 
Yeah, I don't know, man. I like Gulak on his own. We he Gulak's had a stable before, didn't he? Um, Catch point, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Nice. Um, I feel like this is more of a favor for Nice than it is for Gulak. Um, oh, for nice sure. Nice suffers from. <clears throat> yeah, Nice is in that the same category as a Apollo Cruz, um, and where that they have everything there. There's just something. You know, whether it be his heel character or, or whatever it is, or just it's just missing something. And yeah. I don't know that they've found people's it just affection. Yet. Like, <laughs> sorry, yeah. well, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I, but I, we just look, man. I, you're talented, I, but like, I, I'd rather sit in a corner and eat saltines so than weird, watch your I, match. Like, it's a weird, like, I don't know if it's a weird inherent psychological thing, but. Typically, especially with in terms of wrestling, once you see that guy that's chiseled, he's got all the abs uh, and everything, people inherently dislike that guy. Um, that's typically why they make them heels and everything. Um, it's just something something's off-putting about it, I guess. And it's it's difficult to transition that into someone that somebody cares for. Like they want to see them be the good guy. They want to see them be that baby face. It's it's difficult. Um, and being a babyface, I think, is hard, a lot harder than being a heel, honestly. Um, it's a lot easier to get people to hate you than I like. Ain't that the truth in 2019? Yeah. Holy cow. Right? Um, and so, like, yeah, it, it definitely helps Nice more. Um, though, I, I don't know with, if he's fully with Gulak or he's just it's just a means to an end to get back to the top, you know? Um it's very similar, I would say, to what happened with Gargano the first time. Um, he wasn't a full heel, but he was definitely being more uh, more aggressive and doing some more questionable things. Right. Yeah, Gargano could never go fully heel, but he was getting there. He was getting there. Right, and I, I see the same parallels happening with Nice. It's that very, like, I don't even know how to describe it. I guess, like, that, I guess if you're, if you're into, like, comics and all that shit, it is like basically when Spider-Man had the, the symbiote and he had the, it was corrupting his mind. He was descending more into his primal, you know, dark urges and stuff like that. And sometimes, you know, when you hit rock bottom, you, you get desperate. You know, you don't want to be there. So, you, what got you to the table is not working. His being the premier athlete is just not enough. Being stronger and faster than everybody is not enough. You know, um, and I think that's what needs his character starting to realize that like if I don't start changing and and doing what got someone like Gulak to the top, then I'm going to get left behind, you know? Benji, yeah. god dang it, man. Like, wait for you, bro. I don't know where we would be without you and your psychology, man. I goddamn love it. Um, <laughs> 205 Live, baby. <laughs> 205 Live, baby. Yeah, man, that's our show, bro. That's our, well, 205 Live show. We still got NXT. Um but uh yeah overall solid 205 live i was surprised to see because when i heard that umberto carrillo was going to be the uh challenger for the cruiserweight championship i really thought it was going to be a heads up match the one thing that we forgot to mention was i liked uh dorado in the beginning of the show um assuring uh drake maverick he's like i don't have a ref here it's okay <laughs> because Drake was nervous as hell because it was shot previous in the day before we lost his 24 seven championship. I did like that, man. Um, but yeah, that was two five live on to NXT and we see, uh, the what second match of, uh, Brizango, right? Brizango second match, uh, since, um, uh, Oh God, why can't Just I just read your notes there right there? I, Fandango, Fandango's return, man. <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna say it right, man. What? Put some some jutsu <clears throat> into it, man. Eh? Fandango. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're here for, okay? <laughs> wow. <laughs> they were taking on the team of Chase Parker and Matt Martell, though. Um, two very very vocal Canadians. Oh my god, dude. Their voices towered over everybody in full sail. Um, I like that. I heard that like they kind of share the same story that um, other Canadian tag teams share, like uh, Edge and Christian. These guys have been friends. like They've been tag team partners for 15 years and friends since the third grade. Um, but I guess they just never made it to the mainstream. 
The um, one thing I will say about jobber matches in NXT versus anywhere else, um, a lot of these guys are, are the wrestlers that are already trained in the performance center and everything, and they're guys that you eventually see um, work their way up to getting you know their own music, their own characters, and everything like that. It's not just one and done things. You'll see these guys again. You know, mm-hmm. um, Angelo Dawkins from Street Profits is a perfect example. He started off as one of these guys, you know, and so you eventually see them work their way up. Just the one difference I, I noticed with jobbers and I haven't seen anything else, but continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that was pretty much it. Like, these guys did not look out of place, even though the fact that they look kind of generic and, you know, they're not as established as obviously uh, Brizango is. Um, they held their own oh. in the match. And, and um, uh, oh, my God, what's the, why is her name slipping me, the Glamazon? Um Beth Phoenix. Beth Phoenix was really was really sticking up for him throughout the match, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, of course. Of thought, co- yeah, go ahead. I saw it today before the match. They had a, a new entrance and theme song. Oh, you talking about Brazango? Yeah. Yeah, they yeah. did. Yeah, yeah, they repackaged them a little bit, not like a complete repackage, but no, yeah, no, yeah, no. yeah. Just it's stuff. enough to make it feel like it's fresh, you know. Exactly. Yeah. It, they yep. needed it too. You know, you can't come down. You, you can't see come. The difference, so when just for them being down here, then on the main roster, man. Yeah, but oh uh, my God, yeah. No, decent match, man. Decent match. Like I said, the one thing that kept sticking out to me was just how vocal the um. Uh, God dang, uh, Chase Parker and Matt Martell were. Like, I love Full Sail because when there's a quiet moment, the first loud person will stand out like a sore thumb, and you could hear them throughout the whole match. And I, I don't know why, but it was it was entertaining to me. Um, but of course, uh, Brizango goes over, um, with uh, with their new what's the name of their new finisher? They got a new tag team finisher. The fashion faux like, pas was that what it was? The it's fashion called? faux pas, that's it. Yes, exactly. Uh, it's I thought it was cool. Yeah, man, I, I'm into it. Um, no, I, I wonder how high up uh, Brizango is gonna go in in NXT's roster. Are they gonna get to those tag titles, or are I they gonna? Do you think so? Yeah, man. Like they, they don't here. They don't. Um, they're not gonna do it at the expense of anybody. You know, if anything, just like anybody else, they're gonna have to um, reestablish themselves, work up their credibility, and, until they eventually get to that. You know, if they ever win, it's, it's up to discussion. But I think they're gonna be built up enough value as it is, because you know, um, you, with NXT, as talent goes, you know. Um, they, they at the same time they start building up the new teams, whatever. So you kind of want that constant balance. You want to keep that ecosystem, the ecosystem, and the equilibrium. You know what I'm saying? Keep that homeostasis. <laughs> yeah, real quick though. Yeah. Tom Breeze <laughs> went from you know the main roster where he was never used, and now he's going to NXT. Got his part <clears> back <throat> and gonna be part of the. Arguably the most important brand going forward in the company. I wonder how brands. many people yeah. that came from NXT and are on main roster like just go, I really wish I was back in NXT. Like, I'm sure. <laughs> like, I wonder how many of them just like, God damn it. Like, it's so much better there. Like, just Especially the f- now with the you know, two hours on USA going against AEW. You know, that made some people want to go back oh, just for man. competition. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess, but at the same time, you got to think the paycheck goes up once you get up there. You know, um, your experiences are a lot different. You know, it, it's good that you have success where you are, but you don't want to become complacent and just stay where it's safe. You know, sometimes you just have to risk a little bit more. You know, and whether you sink or swim, you know, that's a that sometimes is what it is. But I think that it, there's something, something I, I don't know. I guess within us that just wants us to, you know take chances and, and, and go up. Us as fans, obviously we want to see them where they where, we, where, they, oh, where they're going to do better in NXT and everything, but I sometimes I try to look at it from their perspective. You know, they, NXT was great, whatever, but you don't want to be that person in 
that's still re- visiting high school after you graduated. You know what I mean? I was actually thinking the oh, same thing. Really no, I, I was thinking that when you were talking about it. Because I will say, like, you know, like, the average age in NXT is actually quite young, it looks right. like. There are a couple people up there, you know, in there that are a little yeah. bit older. But even I was noticing, like, just watching the aesthetic of Brazango in there, I'm like, man, these guys do look older than a lot of the people you see in NXT. Um, right. And uh, there's, so there's a little bit of a stigma that it is a young man's promotion now. Um, yeah, so. But like I said, you you know there's got to be some guys. Because um, what? There was news broke that Chris Jericho was part of a group chat that was like, uh, it was called uh, NXT Wannabes. It was him and a bunch of other main roster guys that just completely acknowledged they'd rather be in NXT than on the main roster. So if sure. this is a this is a real thing, you know. Um, but... I mean, I mean, what do you mean, I go ahead, see, tell us. I can see, <laughs> like, the veterans, because they've had all the smiles on them and stuff, doing house shows and all that. And then when you're in NXT, you know, you only got to tape three days, a, or, you know, two days a month, and then... And then Maybe the crowd is so loot. hot. The crowd they is so hot. They go on a house show loot once every month. So I mean, if you're a veteran and you have the money, where it's not really about the money anymore, I could definitely see you know just wanting to go to that state, yeah. having an easier schedule, trying new things. Yeah, I can see it. Um, next up, we got a couple um backstage like earlier taped interviews first was uh kathy kelly talking about jordan miles uh, queen him... kathy kelly thank you <laughs> queen kathy kelly all right uh talking to miles about hey you know are you uh nervous about tonight uh miles is joined by keith lee outside and he's like yeah it's my first championship so of course i'm nervous and keith lee is like hey buddy listen you've only been here a couple months and you've already got uh, championship match. You got nothing to be uh, worried about. Nothing to be nervous about. And um, that's pretty much it. Just, you know, just reminding us that that's the main event of the night. Uh, cut to Io Shirai attacking Candice LeRae with a kendo stick. Pretty brief segment. Their feud's going. Totally wasn't intended for... Um... Oh, God. What's her name? Oh Jesus! Why is it? Why is it fleeting me now? Now that I have a live mic on me. Just read your notes. No, man, I'm I'm off the hip right now. Um, oh man, Miss Sky Pirate, y'all know who I'm talking about. Miss Sky Pirate. Kyrie Sane. Wow. Kyrie Sane. Thank wow. you. This feud. This wow. feud was obviously intended for Kyrie Sane, man. But hey, Candice LeRae is fine too. Say, you don't say. I think. Well. I think initially that was the mentality but i think candace larray turned everybody's attention once once she had that match with io shirai at the takeover like i don't know um, oh, for me admittedly that that was my thought like uh candace larray she's i just seen her in the indies i know she's amazing but she really hasn't done much over here you know and then once she showed out man, she showed out and i think that that thing where it's like oh that would have been you know Eero Shirai whatever I don't I don't know if that's necessarily what they were going to do um but you know as they pull people left to right to the main roster but I think that Candice LeRae definitely has earned her place in the storyline I mean before sure. the match at takeover Candice was Johnny's wife yeah um, uh, yeah that was the thing is she wasn't like a wrestler she was more or less like yeah johnny's wife it was, it was she weird. had matches here and there but not enough to really give her any momentum or anything it's like not that. like she was in the title hunt no yeah um and then lastly we had uh cameron grimes losing his shit backstage um that he didn't win the breakout tournament um he wanted to be at the very top, but now he's at the bottom. He says he'll work his way up, and then we get like a character because uh, he puts on a top hat, and that's he actually looks pretty badass though. I, I I'm I'm kind of downplaying it now. He actually looks pretty badass with that top hat. I'm interesting he's to see be, what his character is going to turn into. He's gonna be the new original Bray. The what? The new original Bray Wyatt. Not the thing, but the oh Bray. oh yeah, go to. <laughs> Jesus. Got the hat. Has the big old beard. 
Yeah, Charlie. Southern boy too. He's not Louisiana. He's North Carolina, my neck of the woods out here. Which uh, explains a lot. Man, I'm from explains Maine. I'm from Maine, okay? I just live here. All right. I'm a big fan of Cameron, though. Uh, even from his working impact. I, I think he has a lot of potential in the NXT. Yeah. Now, he but, does. Oh. Like, his matches were hot, man. I picked him for the win. I really did. Really? Yeah. Really? Don't mean sound like damn surprise. I picked I mean, him for the damn win, man. California. Uh, California. Carolina dude picks a Carolina dude. I mean, you know. <laughs> What happened next? <laughs> yeah, let us know what, what happened next after this. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Kona Reeves. Kona Reeves. Yeah. yeah. What's Kona Reeves' character, man? He do, you don't know? Enlighten me, my friend. He's the finest. Tastes like Jinder Mahal to me. Yeah, I'm going to pretend saying. I didn't hear that. That's what I'm He's saying. the finest. <laughs> He's the NXT Jinder Mahal for me. Oh my god, I know, man. Like, nothing about this guy seems threatening. <laughs> nothing. And even his poses like, seem like some guy who's imitating a wrestler. Like, I don't know, man. I'm sorry, well, dude. We like. need to have the Bollywood Brothers, Jinder, and him for a party. I am not hearing this. <laughs> I am not hearing this. That's a party Ric Flair wouldn't even go to. Oh my god, hell <laughs> no. Uh, oh. See, some, some people are just not used to the finer things in life, so y'all don't know what you have when you see it, you know? Yeah, neither is Reeves, because he can't buy a win, okay? Like, so I'm sorry, man. God, <laughs> <laughs> <A> slander. <laughs> well, let's see how he does in this match. Maybe he'll turn it around. All right, what happened in this match? He lost. <laughs> just... <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, man! <laughs> oh yeah, man! Oh, it was it was good. It was an alright match. It was alright match. He, he he took the L. He took the L uh, to know, a okay. Dream Valley Driver. Or no, 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 no. Was, yeah, no, it was it was a Dream Valley Driver. Was they got the win. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, the main story was after the match. Um, Roderick Strong appears on the Titan Tron. And he, he's, like, illuminated, like, this orange and red. And you're like, what's going on? And he's talking about, you know, I needed to get your attention. I needed to grab the spotlight. As the camera pans out, uh, Roderick Strong has lit Velveteen Dream's couch ablaze. What? Yep. Velveteen <laughs> Dream's couch. Fuck your couch. Yeah, he said, fuck your couch, Dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. And Dream was, Dream was like a... It was almost up there when um, Bray Wyatt saw his compound get lit on fire. It was it was up there, man, with with the level of distress. That couch was iconic, man. Yeah. My main question was, did Roderick take it out there by himself? <laughs> he put it on his back. But they should have had the rest of the oh, there, Mr. like Logical in the background, here. in the background. Not say a word, just in the background, in the distance. Are you a I professional think. mover, like. <laughs> <laughs> well, Velveteen Dream always has like a couple women like roll the couch out. Maybe Roger Strong was like, "Hey, ladies, come here, just put the couch." Yeah, but it looked like kids back in the woods. Like I don't see it rolling in the woods. Yeah. No, man. Yeah. How many couches have you burned in your life? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> just oh, saying, it looks man. like a decent sized couch. It was. It was. <laughs> This guy works for Bob's furniture over here. She's saying, shit, all on its few there, take it out there, and at least be in the shot. You know? Yeah. Like, Roderick, Roderick, listen, I know you want this gold, man, but you can't keep telling us to lug furniture around for you. <laughs> Roger, well, look, it's going to look really good right here. The shot is going to look good, okay? Did you remember the lighter fluid? <laughs> Just... Kyle probably didn't. Kyle would have forgot it. Yeah, I would have forgot. Um, no, not you, Kyle O'Reilly. Kyle O'Reilly. Oh, the shit. eagle, man. The eagle. <laughs> man, there's not many Kyles in wrestling, okay? Like, there's not, all right? Oh, man. Um, but, yeah, so we get a recap of uh, last week, Shayna Baszler going face-to-face with, uh, with Ripley. We see that uh, they will have a match next week. 
Uh, the thing here that uh, messes me up is later in the show, um, it's announced that two weeks from now, there'll be a triple threat match for Shayna Baszler's title. So that was just a weird phrasing. Um, so is that, is that not a title match against Ripley? I thought it was a title match. That's Yeah, that's what I thought too. I caught that too because I thought that was really strange. I was like, well, if uh, that match has happened next week, maybe Baszler's not going to be the champ. Yeah, because they know? said they said yeah they were like I thought it was like okay next week is the title match, but two weeks from now is a number one contenders match for Baszler's title like and that's yeah, no, that's what not, the, it got announced as a non title. Okay, so it's a non title match. Oh yeah, even uh, so it's oh. a big it's a big opportunity for. Yeah, Ripley's got attitude, man. She's got an awesome look and an awesome character. That's um, that's one of those things that okay she started off. Pretty much the same way as Tony Nese and Apollo Crews, um, you know, very just athletic, rocking like just an ripped. apex, right? And it was not hitting, and then <laughs> she went and found herself something. And, and it, just look at the tra- the transition. If you look at her when she first debuted to now, dude, it's night and when day. When she was like in the she, May Young Classic and stuff, right? She was more like just you know Australian former soccer player type thing, whatever. And then she really le- leaned into her rock, whatever, which is nobody else is doing. Yeah. And there's nobody else that looks like her at all. No, that's right. And, no, that's right. Absolutely. And, and, and just found something that works, built up on it. And, and you see now, look, she's having a title shot, man. And, and people are very behind her. It's, it's just one of those things. You just have to find something about you that nobody else has, you know? Yeah. Um. Next up, we had Miss EST taking on Tainara. Oh. Or wait, did I miss something? Real quick, no, you did. This is the number one contenders match. Is actually the first announced match for the debut episode of. <laughs> That's Stadium true. USA. Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why it was a big <laughs> deal. Um. Yeah. Uh, but as far as Ripley goes, I guess it's just a one-off, and she's probably going back to. The, you know, no man, they UK. need to they need to poach a couple of them for stateside. They really do. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, there there is some hot UK talent, man, that I want over here. Um yeah, Ripley's one uh I P- think Tony Storm might be coming over. Tony Storm? I think so. Just yeah. the way she lost her title at Takeover and I don't know, it just seemed like a just who, seemed like a Benji, who would you match. poach from NXT UK? Uh, I'm gonna take Piper Nevin. Piper Nevin, okay, good. Well, what about you, Kevin? Piper Nevin, oh. or I, or um, uh, Killer Kelly. I'll probably take her. Oh, I love Kim. Uh I think it would be a toss-up, really, between Pete Dunne and Rhea Ripley. Um, I actually got to see Pete Dunne wrestle live. I went to an NXT house show like a month ago. Nice. Um, it was yeah, it was awesome. <clears throat> I wanted Poach Walter. Well, just to hear one of those freaking chops live. Oh, my God. Yeah. Dude, no. He won't come over here full time. Because yeah. I think that's what took him so long to uh, actually just, sign. Just sign. Triple H wanted, wanted, wanted him on or in its team. And Water didn't want to come to the state. Okay. Oh. Well, hey, stick to his guns. I man. mean, that's he also turned down New Japan and Ring of Honor just to stay over there where he's at right now. Yeah. yeah. See, I didn't know all this. You guys are educating me. Um, but yeah, Miss EST, uh, Bianca Belair taking on Te Nara uh, Conti. I guess she's a black belt in judo. She's um, not just a black belt. She's the real black belt. Man, put some respect. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's man. the homie. Oh, Do it right. my God, man. Okay, listen. All I know is when she came out, I was like, who is this jobber about to lose to what Bianca the- Belair? <laughs> That's what I was like. I was like, Yo, man, I, th- I thought the same thing. Thank you, oh. Kevin. Like, thank you. Like, <laughs> I had no idea who she was. Yeah, man. She had like a cheesy oh dance. She came out looking like, um, oh, my God, what's her name? Um, Don't oh, you say it. No, she I probably came out here looking like money. I don't know what you're talking about, man. I'm a personal locker. I'm on Benji's side here. Finally. <laughs> find someone. No, I'm going to find out who she reminded me of. I just can't remember her name right now. Um, 
<laughs> she reminds me of Chrissy Teigen. If Chrissy Teigen was a wrestler, <laughs> like, that's what she reminds what? me from Lip Sync Battle. That's what I thought that's she was good. when she came out, man. I was like, oh shit, Chrissy Teigen's wrestling. <laughs> There's absolutely on, nothing on that show. Okay, this chick has put in the work, yo. Like she, she, a lot of people have come and gone from when she came around. You know, just from the Mae Young Classic. She's still here, man. And for y'all to just hear. You know, slander here on this on the Smack Draw podcast, which everybody should subscribe to on YouTube. Thank you. It's not right, yo. <laughs> I enjoy it, Jordan, working in my uh, that's a Look, lot I thought Chrissy Teigen held her own, man. I'm just saying you had Miss EST <laughs> in there. Undefeated, hitting that KOD, you know, for the one, two, three. All right. She can go back to <laughs> pretending to DJ with LL Cool J. That's all I'm saying, man. You're just, you're talking about a legitimate black belt right now in, in judo, and you're gonna you're gonna be this disrespectful man. What? I'm sorry. <laughs> Not really. It's a, it's a pretty decent that. They uh, you know, you expect Bianca to like, dominate, but she didn't. They actually gave her a lot of offense. Yeah. And it's one of those things that there's no other. There's not a lot of other wrestlers. She was doing the judo into wrestling before Ronda Rousey came in and tried to take that lane. Yeah, right? they name dropped Rousey. Uh, before yeah, even the match. even though um, Dinara was doing this way before Rousey even started thinking of wrestling, you know, she was doing this first. Of course, she's a bigger name, so now they're gonna associate that with her. But she was the one doing this first, and and you know, it's it's a very it's very difficult to transition um, judo or any other type of martial arts in a way that that works with um wrestling and i think she's she's starting to find her way a bit as you see she had more offense with um bianca belair you know it's not like she just got here and squashed and everything um it might not be your guys cup of tea that's all cool there's different different kinds of wrestling for different kinds of people you know um, yeah but for us i mean if she gets ooh, good at wrestling then i might get behind her Jesus. <laughs> good at wrestling. Yeah, well, one thing Brutal. I noticed about this match, though. Uh, Jesus. It's all, I mean, they've always shown off Bianca's athleticism, but it's mostly been, like, showing off her strength more. I feel like they've showed up a lot more of her athleticism this match. She had a lot more nip ups, nip up, more yeah. counters, landing yeah. on her feet. It seemed like. Monkey flipped onto her feet. So, but, yeah. Yeah, by multiple times. Uh, but and they I, still had the straight spots too, like on the outside catcher and then doing the fall away. To to uh, that point, I think more so than her athleticism, more so than her strength, I think something that we saw in this match, she definitely showed much more, like not even just ring awareness, but just ring IQ. Like she's she's on point with all of these little things that you don't normally pay attention to that you that when you see that someone's not doing it it looks bad you know and i think bianca belair is she's starting because she's still relatively new to wrestling and i think she's she's picked on it super quick and she's picked up on it, a lot of these little things that some people take years to get you know and i think this match really showed um how she can quickly work a crowd get them in you know much more than her athleticism much more than her you know, strength, whatever. It's that ability to make people invested in the match, you know? So, little known fact, though, man, Benji, when when you were in study hall with Bianca back in the day, did, like, she ever tell you that she was going to become a wrestler? Motherfucker. Listen, I, for those that don't know, I ended up going to the same high school and everything, you know, but it's not like You I were was passing notes back and forth. Get the fuck. You were, you were. No, no, no. no. Look, <laughs> Yo, people don't know this. Listen, I'll, I I know Benji's kind of shy about this. But Benji and Bianca Belair, man, they were classmates, man. And they used to kick it in study hall, bro. Like, for real. They even hung out after school. You know, I, I didn't want to put that out there. But, you know, <laughs> Benji told me in private. Benji told me in private about him and Bianca. Yeah. So yeah. what else do you have on your notes that you wrote over there? Uh, Johnny Gargano will address his future uh -huh. with NXT next week. <laughs> <laughs> no, Benji, go ahead, go ahead and tell him, man. Y'all just went to the same school, right? It was just the same school, same time, you know. But it's not like I knew her. No, that, well, that was it. Do you so have any like... memories of running into her, like in the hallway, or anything? 
Probably. I don't. I don't remember. Do you remember high school? Kind of. Yeah. I don't... The, the worst parts of it. Like... Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm sure you remember being bullied and all that stuff, but more than that. <laughs> Jesus. Yo, listen, man. Listen. I didn't get bullied too much. All right. I didn't get bullied that much. Anyways. He just doesn't want to remember because Bianca bullied him. Yeah. <laughs> That's what so... it was. <laughs> it's crazy, wow. man. You went to the same school as Bianca at the same time, man. That's something like I'd have that like on a damn business card or something, you know? <laughs> just like... I did that. I'm from the same area as Calisto in Chicago. No, like... wait. Are y'all? Do you have a yearbook? Were y'all in the same yearbook? Could be. I don't know if I have it. I'll probably have to look it up. Dude, get your yearbook, bro. Y'all, that's where y'all would but be. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to name drop and like. Love letter guy. to Bianca. Listen, y'all and <laughs> you and Benji next to each other in yearbook. I'm telling you. Bro, she wouldn't know who the fuck yeah, I am. I'm not sure you remember that time you took her to Longhorns. <laughs> <laughs> very timely. Very timely. You tell us all about. Which shout out to that person who felt that he and decided to just like throw that title on the street and just dip. <laughs> like, oh, God, this is getting too big. <laughs> right? Like, they probably just took it as a joke, and then they're like, oh, shit, this is big. This is this is not good. <laughs> Hundred... That blew up, man. That was, like, everywhere, even outside of wrestling. That was that was. Oh, yeah. Yo, and I, I completely undersold, like, that belt. Apparently, it's worth uh, over six figures, over a hundred grand. Holy I shit. was saying like ten thousand, but no. Apparently, it's over a hundred thousand dollars in value. Really? Between diamonds, gems, and gold, yeah. The report I saw was thirty grand. Really? Maybe then they're playing it up. Maybe then they're just playing it up online. But you know, it I could can't be kayfabe. What spot it was that reported it? But I saw it was thirty grand. Well, either way, that's more it's money than still... the average person usually has on a regular day. On a regular oh day, God. Jesus, or some and some like, people in a year. I was year. thinking, like, what would you even do with that? Like, how would you even like? Yo, strip out the strip out the gems and melt down the gold. I, I said it from the beginning. That's <laughs> find a shady pawn shop. You, know, you you answered that pretty fast, man. I mean, you're a little suspect now. No, I just <laughs> I think on the fly, man. I can think on the fly. If that bell fell I on my I, lap, oh boy. I still think like Vince hired somebody. He's like, fuck it, this was a bad idea. Maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> uh, I think this week we was really supposed to get the East West American East West Championship. The American East West Championship, yes. Oh, Is that no? Oh my God! Maybe just Chris Jericho was notorious for going to Longhorn after uh, pay per views or something, and yeah, Vince just Vince knew. knew where he'd be. Yeah, he knew. <laughs> oh my God. It, it was just it was a, it was such a strange story that it almost felt like okay this is a work or whatever but yeah. it's illegal real, to file a false police report that's the only thing that's... real life sometimes real life is just stranger than anything you can make up man that's true very well, very true the thing was is that Jericho just kind of turned it all on its head and turned it into a fucking sto- storyline anyway he which is, he ruled <laughs> proves that he's one of the greatest of all time and he man. Yeah. He's milked this for all it's worth, man. Oh so yeah. Fast. Oh my god. I love that. got the... over a stupid another stupid phrase. I know the bubbly. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. I watched that like a hundred times. That is so goddamn funny. Oh man, I know man. <laughs> Jesus. But I, I think it's 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 okay. I think it's time for those memes to start like fizzling out. I think the joke's good, you know. Let's 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 end it on a high note, you know. I don't. Oh man. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! I saw that. I couldn't help it. Um. Next up, Johnny Gargano will address his future with NXT next week. Is he staying or going? He's staying, right? I stay. He's staying. Yeah. He's. Well, Mr. I mean, if you if you start to look at all the you know business sides of everything, would it make sense for one of your top stars to leave a comp? You know, your brand when you're about to start on a TV show? No, that doesn't make sense. You yeah. know. I mean, storyline-wise, like, kayfabe-wise, if you look at everything, like, what else, what else is left for him to do here? Well, I, I imagine it's Take on Raw and SmackDown. 
You know, take His on AEW. Against Shane Thorne after Thorne caught him out last week. So. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, because he, he, I don't, th- I don't think you want him to face Cole again. Like, I don't think they can do any more with that. No, 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 no. Yeah, you got to buy yeah. time until um, yeah. Champa is good. Maybe Champa will jump him on the debut episode. That'd be interesting. That'd be badass. Yeah, man, kick that feud off on on uh, on um, television. Um, but, but with him, like I would, just me as a fan, like I would rather him. Don't rush this one back. Take your time coming back from this one, man. Because I know he rushed coming back from the other ones and wrestled injured pretty much the whole time. But this was the neck, man. This was it was yeah. a very close call. From what I gather, Champa is uh, trying to finish his career in NXT. Like he's expressed no interest in um, going up to the main roster. Well, he wants to um, be NXT for him, life. Him and Gargano have this mentality, this mindset that how people want to move to the main rosters and, and have those WrestleManias, whatever. They they have it said in their minds that they want to make that NXT be as big as the WrestleMania, be as big as and all these been, other brands in Japan. Anything doesn't matter what it is. Go watch, what? Go watch uh, the Freeport series of Champa's recovery and stuff. That was that's, for, that's not only sad, but it, it's it's so good, man. Yeah, and you can tell his love for NXT, uh, especially when he's announcing to his you know other talent that his injury has to give up the belt. You so, know, you can just tell he don't. And I don't. I don't think. Yeah, man. I don't know. I I think those guys. I think. I mean, NXT's already beat. Um, uh, Takeover's already beat. Big four pay per views. Uh, Survivor Series was the first one to eat the X, where Takeover outdrew Survivor Series in viewers. Um, well, that's an easy one to do, though. I mean, a, when you got War Games versus Survivor uh, Raw versus SmackDown thing, I know. It ain't even gonna mean nothing. Well, like the yeah, because the one coming up, the next Survivor Series, it's coming right after War Games here in Chicago. Like that's that's a tough show to follow, man. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. God, especially. Yeah. Especially when you know whoever wins the Raw versus SmackDown thing, it, it ain't gonna matter in two weeks anyway. So exactly, I mean, they call it a big four, but at the end of the day, look what happened been... when what Raw won the clean sweep on SmackDown. You would, like you would what think came that, out of that? You would think with like a Survivor Series, since you have all these brands and you're putting them on television, and everything, you would think they would change it up a bit and have it be more um, Raw SmackDown versus NXT or like just different brands, you know. Yeah, Similar to what they're cool. doing with the um, with versus NXT UK versus two hundred five, like you would think that okay, Survivor Series is we've been doing that SmackDown versus Raw, but now we have we're trying to build up more brands. Why not highlight them? You know, I'm telling I you, I don't even. I, I don't even. I mean, want it, it makes too much have. sense for WWE. I know that exactly. I just want it to go back how it was. Just you know, just you can still have your five on five matches, but don't make it brand versus brand. Just you know. Come up with it in storyline. Team versus team. Yeah, man. I mean, the, the old days, Team Austin versus Team Bischoff, Team Angle versus Team Lesnar. I mean, there's an easy way to do that, and they've done it before. I think this Raw versus SmackDown thing is just a little lazy in my opinion. It's, it's got him played out, I think. Yeah. yeah, they just like the invasion angle that they come that precedes it. It's typically hot, um, especially considering what it did for Becky Lynch. Oh, my God. Um, but anyways, something else to look forward to is two weeks from now, we will have a triple threat match announced by William Regal. What? Uh, yeah, for the number one contender spot for wow. Shayna Baszler's Women's NXT Championship. The, par- the participants will be, uh, cool. Benji's girl, cool. Mia Yim, Hell along yeah. with Benji's... Oh, Number two girl, Bianca Belair. <laughs> and Benji's <laughs> number three girl, Io Shirai. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> Which, do you guys think that it's it's high time that Baszler loses this, this title? It's going to be Absolutely. Ho- who does she lose it to that's credible? It, maybe Mia. Like, or Io. I think it may be Bianca. Bianca? I mean, it, it, I mean, Bianca's say, been which... grinding, you know? So, I mean, of, of these three, you're saying none of these are credible? No, 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 no. What are you trying to say? No, 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 that's, no, you're right, Elaborate. you're right. I misspoke, I misspoke, and I'm, I'm being mm-hmm. serious. Uh, Baszler has been sold as such a threat. 
you instantly want someone as dominant to take the title from her, but that's the problem. No one has been built as dominant as her, so it makes it hard to determine who would be the one to get the belt off her. Um, and so that's that's my only issue. Is it's like I said. These girls deserve to get it off her. I don't want to see her relinquish it like Asuka did um, to what Ember Moon, I think it was. Um, no, she uh, she needs to lose really it. The injury. I think Ember just won a match for No, it. no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I understand it was due to injury. But what I'm yeah. saying is it kind of hurt Ember Moon's championship reign because it was like she couldn't get past Oscar, you know she got yeah. the belt after the champ left the company or after the champ it was, left it was the promotion a, just a unlucky scenario where you had Oscar leaving you get Ember Moon winning and at the same time just by coincidence Shayna Baszler comes in yeah. she was just in a, it was just a weird situation for, for her it was. no fault of her own no 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 and honestly I have the utmost respect for Baszler for someone to fully come from the M- uh, MMA background and embrace the pro wrestling style of things I felt like her character has developed into something legit you know I don't think that she's like cheesy by no means I think that she is a legit wrestler um, and, and a great one at that you know um, uh, I just I'm I'm ready to see it go, man. That that rain has got to yep. come to an end soon. You know, it's got to come to an end. Um, yeah. You know, um, I thought, frankly, um, Io Shirai was going to take it from her. Uh, one of the couple matches that they had, which I thought would have made sense. Yeah, yeah I'm not. The only person not, that's beaten Baszler has been uh, Kyrie Sane, right? I think. If that's yes. Correct. Yep, Kyrie Sane. Um. I'm not a big fan Surprisingly, of... Surprisingly, actually, looking back now. It's not that I'm not a fan of Mia Yim. I am. But oh, like here it comes. Here it comes. <laughs> no, last week, I mean, Mia came to Regal and was... You know, oh, yeah, Mia chance. got put in her damn place, man. Yeah, oh, but, my God, she did. I, I mean, honestly, why does... Regal was like, wise, sit why the does, fuck down. <laughs> why does Mia desire it? She took out Shayna's buddies and still lost one-on-one. I mean, and I he was like, he personally, like, I would rather see Candice LeRae in this match than Mia Yim storyline wise. I don't understand. Like I said, I just don't understand her. It was but a- it is kind of cool for all three of them the 20 years from now to say I was a part of the first ever announced match for the Wednesday Night Wars. Damn, so, that's a yeah, cool point, Sebastian. That's a very yeah. cool point. No, I loved that last week Mia Yim got put in her place, man. As much as I like her, but if she got jumped. Yeah. By um, by uh, Baszler and her girls, and she was like, "I deserve another shot. I deserve another shot." And then Regal was like, "She's like, you attacked them leading up to match with Baszler. You lost against Baszler, and they jumped you. What else did you expect to happen? You know, like it was, it was so. Yeah, that's it was like, such a that's for, such a cool for, detail in the story. You know, for usually things that. happen without any like." consequences you know and for them to keep that continuity be yeah. logical about it that that's that's pretty cool yeah it's you know, so yeah. legit the four brand uh, is known for that continued you know in the longevity of storylines it's just for the what? That, what, what the word you used continuity longevity yeah it is kind of weird a week <laughs> after that Regal's like never mind you could be in a number one container so like just can't beat it by yourself point. Yeah. yeah I mean, so. Oh man. Um, yeah. Tell you one thing though. How about this main event, Mr. Jordan Miles? Did this did this create a superstar out of Jordan Miles? Is he now a main player in the top of the card of our NXT division after this slam bang match with Adam Cole? Is Jordan Not Miles in the opinion. picture? Not my opinion, but I think he, what he can he can get there. Yeah. What more does someone have to do? I just I mean, have more than one high-profile match. Yeah, just for a few just weeks. Have so more like... matches. <laughs> yep. I mean, you're you're in there with Adam Cole in a main event. Of course, you're gonna have a good match. Yeah. And it's he has a good main event every single. So you guys are discrediting what this guy did in this ring, man. No, 
I mean, it was good. It was fun. I really enjoyed the match. I really enjoyed the story, but I don't think you should go out there and have one match. I mean, for one, at at any point, did you guys think he was going to win? At any point. No. No. I'm sorry. No. See, unlike you guys of of little faith, I believe, all right, I thought he was going to take it, and it was going to be a shock and a shock to the system. Shock the system. <laughs> Yo, Cole was right, man. Cole told him, like, don't do this. Don't call me out. You too, it's too early. Go after a smaller title. Go after Dream, you know? Uh, yeah. He was it's right, a, man. He was right. To me, it's such a dope-ass story where you have, you know, Jordan Miles just be like, I'm going to take on the, the biggest guy here, you know, like, being eager, being this, the breakout star, you know, um, just lunging head first for the for the big boss, you know, and man. he came up short, you know, he came up short against him, but, you know, sometimes you got to go big, man. Bullshit. He's the guy that shows up at the blackjack <laughs> the blackjack table and goes all what in on his first hand, bro. What that's table? what happened. Why? Ha- why does that have to be a blackjack table? Fuck you, Benji. I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened, no, man. I, or maybe. I say, I, I, go ahead. No, no. I mean, that was it. That was that was my analogy. That was all it was. I mean, I enjoyed the match. I think he had a really good match, a really good showing. It's just I think he needs to do it for a few more weeks before we say. And I, yeah, he's I, gonna think, be. I think without a doubt he's gonna prove all y'all wrong, and I want you to come back Yo, to this. He ain't sniffing and that title what for at saying. least another year. At least another year, man. I understand yeah. this is this is y'all's first time getting to know what he can do, what he you know is all about, whatever. But y'all been watching this guy for years. Y'all know what he can do, and y'all know he's coming for that Bro, title. He's going to take it. He's going straight from the title match to Colgate commercials. I'm telling you, that's all that's happening from I, here. No, I think he's going to be featured wow. on the program, especially it going two hours here in a couple of weeks. I think there's definitely a spot for him. Oh yeah, I just. I just don't think it's going to be on top of the card right off the gate, personally. Yeah, I, I would agree with that, man. I mean, I think he solidified himself, you know, in the NXT uh, picture for sure. And I was really impressed with his performance. But, yeah, I don't know <laughs> about now, Do you guys you know, uh, foresee something going on with him and Keith Lee? I, yeah. I think that would be a real interesting yeah. thing. To yeah. Because you did have Keith Lee after the sh- after the match after the show come up to him again and be like, "Keep your head up high, you know. You you went out there, you showed out. Everybody knows who you are now. You know you're gonna get your another another shot. I promise you, you're gonna get another shot. Keep your head up and and then keep going, you know. So we could be seeing something going on here. You know, it's a lot of different angles they can take this. I think what'll happen oh, is Keith look. Lee will get that belt, and then Jordan Miles will be like, "You remember you said I was going to get another shot?" And Keith Lee's going to be like, "Who are you?" <laughs> like, I, I don't know Miles you. Was just there at it. For yeah. a couple <laughs> there, there's <laughs> definitely a, a lot of potential there, especially with the teasing of of everything that's, that Keith Lee's been doing over the last few months. Dude, Keith yeah. Lee is the future, bro. He's I mean, I would like, I would like it, Aaron. Uh, you know, we were talking about last week. What's next for Keith Lee after losing the Dijak? Di- Di- yeah, man. You know, and a tight division needs, you know, feel. still I mean, hurts. Especially if the, uh, which we don't know for sure if it's a for sure thing now where they lost the belt. If Street Profits are going to go wrestle on the main roster instead of being narrators. But the tight <laughs> division yeah, right. is, uh, yeah. the tight team division on the United States is kind of, you know, thin. So it'd be a pretty good addition to it. Yeah. I don't know, Could man. Could be, man. But those, uh, to me, those two are definitely going to be big players in this in this in NXT going forward. For sure. I'm I'm saying top of the car. Y'all are saying not. I think well, it'll be interesting to come back to this conversation later on when you have Jordan Miles as the NXT champion. I'm just Yo, saying. Yo, the dude, the dude. I mean, two o five. You can't see my hand gesture, but I'm throwing up the two o five for him. You say that like it's a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I could see him winning the title somewhere down the road. I just don't think he's going to be in a title picture, you know, yeah. two weeks from now. He, he win maybe win. the twenty four seven championship and get rolled up by our truth. Uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, they're but both I, face. They're both face. No, Elias will get it first from him. Elias will okay. get it. 
just just clip this tape to all of y'all listening clip this tape and then send it to this dude once he's proven wrong <laughs> anyways you guys that's our show for tonight man thank y'all for joining us uh make sure to catch us next week uh or later this weekend we'll figure it i don't know um, but did you guys know that uh, this was episode 49? Next episode with Shoot's going to be episode 50 of the Smack Drop Podcast. 50 episodes? Yep. Well, Ooh. next the next episode will be episode 50. Well, what about wow. 15? What's our most viewed Te- video? Well, technically, uh, SummerSlam. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, as far as Podbean goes, YouTube, it's still your debut, Benji. Whatever. You and your <laughs> freaking that, YouTube really? bots. <laughs> All right. You and your wow. bots. Technically, like I'm, the, I'm the podcast breakout star of the year. <laughs> Technically, this would have been episode 50 had um, our raw episode not uh, been completely botched and had to be taken down. But uh, what happened with the raw? What are you doing? You're supposed to be the producer. You're supposed to have the shit online. <laughs> Look, man, I'm, I'm not re- perfect. Surprise, surprise. surprise. I'm not perfect. Okay, <laughs> forgot to do a sound check on my own mic, so my mic was muted. For you didn't the do entire a sound check. You episode. didn't take notes for this episode. Like, I don't understand. Who says I didn't take <laughs> notes, man? My notes? I labeled them WrestlingInc.com. Okay, hold on now. Um, anyways. <laughs> uh, Benji, uh, yes, of sir. course it wouldn't be an episode with you on it if we didn't get some closing words from the, the wrestling philosopher. Is, you know what? <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something real quick here. A lot of times... You're going to be the champion. You're going to be a Jinder Mahal. You're going to be a Singh brother. You're going to be a <laughs> Dinara Conti. You're going to be a Jordan Miles. And then you're going to have people saying you can't do it. Y'all are going to be, you know, low tier. To that, I say, prove these people wrong. Prove them wrong. Do what you know you can do in life. And that's join the 24-7 division. 